along the lines of things I wish I knew, statistics are worthless. 73.2% of all people know that. I think that's a Bart Simpsonism. Now, as I often say, and this is something you have to wrap your head around, especially if you're newer to trading, is that you're dealing with the emotions of thousands. How could you, how could that be reduced to a statistic? And if you throw in wars and politics and the Fed and stupid people doing stupid things, et cetera, then it really gets muddy. And a stupid people example, you know, Mark Douglas once said, all it takes is one a-hole to screw up a perfectly good trade. And as I've said before, and I think I might have written it in uh, one of my books, but I remember putting on some S&P futures and I said, you know what, I'm going to go grab a shower. This position just looks fantastic. I can't wait to see how much money I, I, I make when I get back to my office. Boy, whatever you start thinking like that, <laughs> you might want to take a little profits. But anyway, so I'm in the shower feeling like a genius, and I get back to the office, and my screens are red and like big red. And I'm like, what the F happened? Did the Fed say something stupid? Did the world blow up? Did we start a new war? Well, no, it turns out some idiot was in the Capitol and he started shooting people and the market just tanked on that. So how could you have a statistic that factors in some idiot doing something? And one thing I was thinking about as I'm going live tonight is think about yourself as a microcosm, okay? I fat fingered a few trades recently, but fortunately they didn't go through. I fat fingered a, a trailing stop at like 0.10 instead of 1.0 and things like that. So look at your own emotions, look at your mistakes again, like the fat fingering, but look at your own emotions and you might get caught up trading for recreation or you might get sucked into FOMO and there's no formula or statistic that could factor all of that in and that kind of circles back to nobody knows exactly what a market will do and and nobody does know exactly what a market will do so don't worry if you don't know exactly what's going to happen because once you make a trade nobody knows what's going to happen afterwards just follow your plan now let's say you had the slightest absolute edge you knew for a fact you had this absolute edge and the reason i've got the little casino on the background here is because casinos, in some cases, not like a slot machine, but in some cases, some of the card games, they have a very slight edge, but they know they have the edge. And they know that statistically that edge is gonna work over the long term. And that's why they have, that's why the industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry, because they know they have an edge and they know they're going to get paid. Yeah, they're gonna lose here and there. They might have a bad losing streak, but over time, they're gonna do just fine. So with the same analogy, if you had the slightest absolute edge in the markets, which you don't, by the way, there's no holy grail, okay? But if you did have that edge, you should sell everything and bet on your system. And people sell systems out there and they claim you have this edge, like it's always gonna work. And believe me, it won't. Now, volatility statistics, I'll concede this, it's simply a measurement. It's not a prediction, it's a measurement, okay? They do have some merit and they should be respected. So learn a little bit about historical volatility. Don't worry about the formula or anything like that. Just understand that stocks with a higher rating are gonna bounce around a lot more than stocks with a lower rating as a general statement. Now, I see a lot of people get into these risk versus reward conversations and every now and then we'll we'll strike up one of these conversations in the Facebook group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders. And you got to realize that these risks versus reward, the R versus R conversations, they're really academic at best. If anything, just the opposite would probably hold true. For instance, three to one reward to risk. That sounds really, really, really good. For every dollar you risk, you have the potential to make three dollars well the problem with that is you're three times more likely statistically <laughs> there's that word to get stopped out that's the volatility statistics okay i threw that volatility statistic in there last minute so this would work but it's true so if you got a one point stop at a three point ipt 
you are three times more likely to get stopped out at one point than you are to hit that IPT. So don't get too wrapped up in statistics. And people are like, well, Dave, what's your edge? Well, I don't know, but on the first loaf, the first half, okay, if I'm buying a thousand shares, divide that at two, the first half is 500. In this case, how many shares? Just 300 shares, round numbers. So in the first 150 shares, my IPT was one to one, as it always is. Now on the second one, it's hopefully, I know it's a word you've got to be careful using in this industry, but hopefully it's many, 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 many to one. In order to win big and survive longer term in this business, you have to have limited risk and the potential for unlimited gain. So that three to one, again, sounds fantastic. But even if you are hitting that occasional three to one, you don't have unlimited potential gains. So you're locking yourself out at that three to one. Now, how often does three to one happen? Not that often, or I should say, how often does 30 to one happen? No, not that often but it's possible or even 10 to one or even 3.6 to one. Now, the, the example I beat a dead horse with as far as risk to reward is the ARLP we mentioned yesterday from a few years back. And you could see, again, we were looking for one to one on the first half because we don't know how far the stock will go, but there's a pretty good chance if our stock selection is pretty good. In this case, this was a major longer term bottom, it was a bow tie, it was coming off of lows, it had acceleration coming off of lows, it looked pretty good. So I thought this stock had a lot of potential, but I didn't know if it would double or triple over time. And we did give up a lot of open profits in this one, by the way. So it was that number was much, much bigger. But overall, it was 17.76 to one. And that's gonna make your year. So that plus the thousand. What's that round number? 16, 17, 18. Let's just say $19,000 round numbers, if my math is correct on this one. And that's on a 100K account. So that's a 19% return on your account. And that's going to really help out your account longer term. By the way, if you want the service archives, you can, you can go to davelearner.com slash archives and you can find them in real time at davelearner.com slash trading service. Archives are 100% free. The trading service has a cost associated with it.